Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So my uh, uh, so being a Muslim, as you can uh, already mention, uh, my main problem is uh, with the Christian doctrine of Godhood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So my, my uh, there are a couple of questions that are related. Uh, first of all, I find uh, this concept uh, logically fallacious. Uh, like there are many aspects to its logical fallacy, as in maybe uh, uh, one of them could be that how can God be finite and then infinite at the same time? Like this is like it's like saying that there could exist a square circle. It's it's a logical fallacy, right? So uh, uh, when we say that Jesus was God or Son of God, we are actually saying that God existed in finitude during the life of Jesus, and He also is infinite at the same time. This is uh, logically fallacious. Now, because you are uh, like you're coming from a historical standpoint. Did you want me to respond to that, or are you? Uh, having it's a relate. Um, uh, uh, like the same question, continuing. So, because you're coming at it from a historical standpoint, um, another thing that adds, like the historical evidence that adds, uh, like that supports this argument, is that the concept of Trinity, the word Trinity itself, it doesn't appear as a theological term till near the end of the second century after Jesus. So uh, it was first used by, as trias by Theophilus, the bishop of Antioch in AD 180. So uh, we can, uh, and like adding up to that, when you refer to Mark chapter 14, verse 62, which is uh, what you say is the proof that Jesus claimed to be God, um, are you really applying the same criteria of objectivity that you were applying previously to the Quran? when uh, interpreting this as meaning that Jesus is claiming himself to be God? Because if you like, look at it completely objectively, uh, looking at the entire text, like, there is nothing in the entire text that's, that's saying that Jesus is claiming to be God. And in fact, the verse that you yourself quote is actually saying son of man. So, I mean, I, I, th questions. I think you get uh, um, yeah. Don't go anywhere. What's your name? Uh, Munzer. Munzer, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Pakistan. Pakistan. Um, I had the exact same questions when I, was, uh, when, I, when I practiced Islam. What I want to point out is that first and foremost, what we have to see is what Jesus claimed for himself. Now the secondary stuff that follows, the theological unfolding or unpacking of what he said, we can spend years and years debating what it means. But what did he say about himself? That's the first thing we want to look at. So, again, that's a historical perspective. Theologians argue all day long, back and forth, back and forth. You know, theologians argue all the time, and I just sit back and watch and smile, because you can't really prove it one way or another. But when it comes to historical events, we can show with relative degrees of certainty, if the evidence is good, if the records are good, what the most likely conclusion is. So first, and um, let me give you an answer before, if you feel like interjecting, we can talk afterwards. First, I want to point out you are absolutely right. The term Trinity is not used till the end of the second century. What is the doctrine of God called in the Quran? In Islam, what is the doctrine of God called? Uh, Tawheed. Tawheed. Is that in the Quran? Uh, I mean, no, the word Tawheed. The word Tawheed the, is a derived word from Ahad. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Good. So you understand the word Tawheed is not itself in the Quran. In the same way, the word Trinity is not itself in the Bible. This doesn't pose a problem. The Shahada is not found in the Quran. You have the components of the Shahada in the Quran, but oh, you do not, hold on, you do not have La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in that way found in the Quran. The oh. component, hold on. The components are found in the Quran. With the Trinity, the components are found in the Bible. So, uh, the word Tawheed does appear in the Hadith. Oh, that's great, is, but it's not in the Quran. Just narrations of the prophet. And the, and the Hadith is much later. So we're looking at the, you ask for the Bible, and we have within the early canonical tradition, people calling a God, a trinity, in the early canonical tradition. In fact, much closer to Jesus' time than the Hadith were to Muhammad's time. So it, whichever way you stack it, when you're consistent, you end up with a stronger case for the trinity, for Jesus' deity. Now I want to continue on to your next part of your question which is, is Jesus finite or infinite? The argument is that Jesus is, you know, actually I'm gonna pose it in a slightly different way. Can Allah come onto this world if he wants? Can he be in this world if he wants? Uh, I, I wouldn't think so. You wouldn't because, think so. So, you, so Allah's omnipotence is limited. He can't come onto this world. It's, it's like, basically, you, Allah cannot do 
uh, logically fallacious thing. Like he cannot create a square circle, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's that's something logically. But how do we know that's what this is? But how but how do we know that's what this is? Because, for example, in Surah Al Imran, when Allah is talking to Moses, it says in Surah Al Imran, I think it's Surah Al Imran. It might be Surah 18, but double check. Um, that Allah, as He spoke to Moses, Allah was in the bush. Allah was in the bush. So if you want to say that meant something else, well, you're going to have to argue with the Qur'an on that one. It seems to be pretty clear that Allah can emanate His voice from a physical place. He can be in a physical place in a sense. In the same yes. way, we don't believe, I don't believe that God coming to this earth limits His omnipotence. It's not a limitation of His omnipotence. Jesus has taken on flesh. God the Father is still everywhere. God, Jesus, the Son, is here on this earth. It's a limitation in that sense, but it's not a limitation of his nature. He is both a divine and human nature. That's the argument. Now, I want to uh, talk about briefly, and then we're going to have to go to the next question, but let's talk afterwards for sure. You asked about the Son of Man. You said he's not calling himself the Son of God. He's calling himself the Son of Man. I'm emphasizing to you, my friend, when this hit me, again, while I was practicing Islam, when this hit me, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. The claim Son of God, according to Jews at that time, was not anything divine. Adam was called the son of God. Solomon was called the son of God. In the Psalms it says, you are gods. It's not a divine claim to call someone a son of God. But when someone refers to that son of man coming on the clouds of heaven, who's going to receive glory, authority, and sovereign power, and people of every nation and language are going to worship him with the worship due only to God, that son of man is more than just a human. He is divine. He's going to be worshipped by all people of all time. So when Jesus calls himself the Son of Man, he's not, it's not the Son of God title. And lots of Christians get this wrong, so I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger at you. Lots of Christians say, oh, Son of Man means he's human, and Son of God means he's God. No, it's the other way around. In the Jewish context, Son of God was a normal human title. Son of Man, from Daniel 7, that was something divine. Go back and read Daniel chapter 7. See that this man is worshipped by all people from all eternity. This man, or one who looks like a human anyway, is worshipped by all people alongside of God the Father. That's the one Jesus is claiming to be. Definitely understand that point that I'm trying to make. And so when you see that Jesus' claim is found there in Mark 14, 62, it's found in all the Gospels. And every time Jesus uses the term Son of Man, He's alluding to that. You cannot extract that from the Gospels. So please put Mark 14, 62 next to Daniel chapter 7 and see what Jesus is claiming for Himself. And we'll talk afterwards for the rest. Lord bless you, my friend. We'll take one last...